Hey, hey, it's TDA, and welcome to a quick episode on proliferation, because I saw a lot of questions and comments uh, in my previous few episodes on the Let's Play about proliferation, and also people, a couple of people claiming things that were simply not true. Now, I'm not trying to bash anyone or, or complain about people giving the wrong information or anything like that, because honestly, Proliferation is quite complicated. There were a lot of stories going around from people who said they tested something which turned out to be incorrect. Um, so over the past weekend, I was trying to verify a few things myself because I myself actually reached a few wrong conclusions as well. So I was just trying to fill around with it, see how it actually worked when I tried it for myself. And I hope you find it useful. Um, mainly, I want to talk a little bit about what proliferation actually does because i saw a few people for example saying well by proliferation you save energy well that's definitely not the case at least not in the way you might think it is um and i also saw a lot of debate going on should i use um, extra products should they use the extra speed as always it kind of depends on what you're trying to do but the short answer is products and i will show you over the next few minutes why that is the case. I will try to visualize it for you. So you don't need to do all the math, but you can just look at my examples and see that it's obviously true. Um, and I want to kind of debunk a few things in terms of the how the extra speed works um, and whether or not spraying only a partial input works. So yeah, let's go right into that. Okay, so let's just start out with something simple. We have two Mark I assemblers here making circuit boards without any proliferation. I didn't hook a dip just yet. And that means that they're making the recipe 45 times per minute. The number is a little bit confusing considering it's making two per recipe. So it actually it's producing 90 per minute. But anyway, you get the point. It's producing at 45 per minute. Now let's hook it up to some proliferators, shall we? I'm just gonna hook up one first, just to show you how that works. Um, so we should have proliferated units going in now, as you can see. And yeah, it's it's over here, but it's not actually doing anything. There's no progress on the extra products. And if I set it to production speed up, as you can see, we didn't, don't actually get a speed up. We just get 45 times the recipe per minute. So proliferating just half the inputs does exactly nothing. Okay, now let's hook them both up. And let's replace the tower because obviously that was in the way. And then let's see what happens. Now Now we have everything proliferated. It will take a moment for that to actually register because of course the copper is not being used as much as the iron. But in a moment we will see the copper being proliferated as well. And now we can see that this is starting to produce. Now you can actually see we're getting exactly 20% um, extra, 22.5% extra. And there we go, 25% extra. And that has everything to do with the fact that part of these were not proliferated just yet. Some of them were. As you can see, we're now getting exactly 25% extra. At a cost of plus 150% energy consumption. So you can see that this building is now consuming 675 kilowatts. While the normal consumption is only 207 so we're actually using two and a half times as much power as we would normally be using. So that is quite a bit and something to keep in mind. Now, um, that means that I could actually get the same production as I had before. So with two of these, I was getting um, twice the production. So if I remove, if I set it now to production speed up, I get 100% extra, so 90 per minute, which is the same as these two combined before. But if I remove this one, um, now of course I get the same as I had before with the two of them without any proliferation. But the thing is, I am now spending 675 kilowatts, whereas if I normally would have put this down, it only produced, it costs 207 kilowatts times two is 540 kilowatts. So. Take that into account that even though I am now producing the same amount of resources, I'm actually spending 25% extra power, power to get those resources. The bonus is, I only need one building rather than two. So that's where the speed up really comes into effect. Now, 
the real question is what is better speeding up or using the additional products and in order to show you that we'll need a little bit more elaborate setup to really visualize it so I will build that and then we can take a look at it together so in order to demonstrate I decided to use the a turbine production chain in order to show you how effective proliferation is or is not turbines is a nice example you have to make a few billion of these throughout the game and it's also somewhere in the middle of the um, complexity in terms of production you need quite a few items as you can see in order to make these 10 facilities work um, you need quite a lot of iron magnets copper and some intermediate processes as well and i made this build three times to kind of walk you through the effect so this is the baseline production with all these buildings attached now, if we go and say we speed up the production, I'm going to assume you're using Mark III proliferators, which increase the speed, as you can see, by 100%. Now, if we do that, that means we only need half the buildings to get the same production. We only need half the buildings here. We only need half the buildings from this one. And, of course, that also holds for the um, coils. We also need only half the production on the... Uh, smelter side of things which means that we can remove five of these we can pretty much remove this entire row of um, little smelters for iron so let's take these out that's exactly half and then we kind of run into a problem because we have an annoying amount here so we can actually remove this entire bottom row and then we can remove about half of this. Now before you st start shouting at me, I'll take a few shortcuts here and there, but for simplicity's sake, this is pretty damn close to what you will actually need if you speed up the production by 100%. Now, if you compare this with that, then this is ob obviously going to take you a lot less space. And um, yeah, if you look at the the inputs requirement it's going to be exactly the same because of course in and out is not changed at all we scaled it so that this is still producing the same we do not get any savings on our inputs if we use the speed setting so we still need as much inputs going in as we would have going out uh, in the normal build or going in in the normal build i should say so these two builds do exactly the same thing. We, um, they process the exact amount of stuff, but this bottom one takes you a lot less space at the cost of costing you 25% more power. Now you're asking me 25%, yes, just to show you once again. Um, proliferation uses 150% power, so this is two and a half times as much. I reduced the amount of buildings by two, so, but these buildings are producing two and a half times as much power as normal. So this is actually the equivalent of having two and a half times this is the same as 1.25 times this in terms of the amount of power it will be re requesting from your grid. So a little bit more power for the exact same production and using half the space. Pretty nice. Um, then we turn to the extra products setting and actually there it gets a little bit more complicated because the extra products setting gives you 25 percent extra products which means that we can have eight of these making the same amount of stuff as before because eight times 1.25 is exactly 10 so we have the same amount of production as we had before now because we only need eight of these to be producing we only need 20% um, less input as well so we can actually not just remove these two but we can actually also remove these we can remove these and then similarly I won't do that here right now but we could also reduce 20% of that and I'll just do that off screen quickly so you don't have to watch it okay so now we reduce the amount of smelters because we are proliferating the last step and you can see we already need quite a bit less smelters just look at the uh, magnets for example then we need in a normal situation but we're not quite done yet 
because these 16 assemblers are producing under normal circumstances exactly enough to feed into these eight assemblers over here. But we don't actually need 16 of these because we are also going to be proliferating the previous step. So that means that these 16 assemblers will now be overproducing the amount of stuff we need for, to make the turbines by 25%, which means that we can remove a, a, another 20% from this. So that's about three of these. Now, because we remove that, we can also remove 20% of this, which is approximately something like this. And once again, we can remove 20% of the remaining smelters over here. So I will not do that because this actually goes even further. Because, because we just removed this and we reduced this, remember we are also proliferating this. So rather than the six that we use show here that we need, because we are also going to be proliferating this step, we can reduce that by a little once again. And because we're also proliferating this, this is actually going to be overproducing as well. So we can reduce it once again. Now you get the point. This is kind of an exponential thing going on here. And this effect becomes stronger and stronger as your production chain gets longer and longer. So for simple products like steel or um, cogs, things like that, where it's only a few steps, this extra product setting isn't going to do that much. But for settings, longer production change, which is pretty much everything else in the game, especially of course in a late game, everything will be like five, six, seven steps. Um, yeah, the effect gets really, really nice. And I'll show you the end result of this particular production chain in a second. Okay, and here you see the end result. So because we're multiplying every step of the production along the way with 1.25 we need 20 percent less buildings at every step but that's an exponential effect so we actually end up needing almost less than a third of the total magnets that we would in a normal production chain because of the multiplication going on same holds for the iron just a little less because a part of the iron goes straight into the engines as well so you have one step less in between so the gain is a little less there and once again, we need uh, less than half of the copper going in. So if you look at the building count between the speed, uh, production speed and the uh, extra products type of build, you can see, and I'll try to get them both on the same screen. There you go. Um, we actually need less smelters in the extra production chain, although we do need a few additional um, assemblers in the production chain, because in, especially in the first few steps, the exponential effect is not that big just yet. So the real question is which one is better? Well, it depends a little bit on what you're doing, but generally speaking, you would probably want to go for extra products the entire time. Why? Well, 100 production speed is just going to give you that. So like I said, you get twice the production for 25% extra um, power cost, assuming you use the Mark III proliferators and you can have your buildings. But the only gain you get here is that you have your buildings. Same inputs, same outputs, half the buildings. Additional energy cost. Here, you actually also almost reduce the amount of buildings by half, although the ratios are a little bit different because you do need more of the later buildings, but uh, you need actually less of the earlier buildings. So you can see if the amount of smelters here is simply smaller than it is in this build. Um, but you have an additional gain because, of course, this, these smelters are working at 200% speed, so they need the same input as normal. These smelters are working at the normal speed, so you actually need less than half the amount of inputs as well, which means that you only need to build half the amount of miners to get this thing operational, assuming that there will be belt sorters, etc. Then you would for this, because this needs the same amount of miners still. So you are actually able to ramp up your production much faster because you don't need to supply your builds with as many raw materials as you would otherwise. So I hope this kind of shows you the idea behind proliferators now and which setting is better. So generally speaking, you want to be using the additional products setting, but keep in mind that if you want to keep things simple, you can, of course, just use the extra production speed as well. There's nothing wrong with that. It's really straightforward. But the extra products are really, really useful.
Now a few last things about proliferation because we have been talking about proliferating inputs and outputs. Um, keep in mind that you can proliferate pretty much everything in the game to get a game. So I already showed in my Let's Play series that you can use it on, for example, anything that produces energy basically, you will get a bonus. You can also proliferate your proliferators, as I think everyone is aware of by now. But a normal proliferator Mark III gives you 60 sprays. If you spray this, it will give you... 25% additional sprays, so 75 sprays. Is that worth it? Yes, it is, because it will basically pay for itself after a few sprays. Uh, and then everything else is um, a bonus. And um, and just, just going back on that for a moment. So if you spray this, you get 15 free sprays. So by spraying it once, you get 15 free sprays. So the net result of that is getting 14 free sprays if that makes sense anyway so i hope that that just that the little example shows you that it is definitely worth spraying it now there's a few other things that are worth spraying so for example i think you can spray spray foundations to use a little less uh, soil pile um, and you definitely also want to be spraying your science and that's probably the most important example because if you spray your science so other than the fact that you can produce a lot more science by spraying all the inputs you also want to be spraying the outgoing science because you actually get more bang for your buck basically you get more research hashes from a sprayed cube than you get from an unsprayed one so um, a long story short if there's only one thing you want to remember from this video i highly suggest you always go for the extra products and that you use that but just make sure you are not overproducing your lower tier items because you will not need as many of them as you would before okay guys i hope you found this useful and don't forget to join in on my let's play series where we put this to practice and yeah i hope you see you in the next one